And I'm going to show you something now that I don't necessarily always do, um, but what you what is possible is that you can refine the stain estimates that QPath uses. So I said that it automatically estimates the image type, and in this case it's got it right as being HDAB, but the stain vectors then that it uses are simply defaults. And so these stain vectors are essentially characterizations of what color blue the hematoxylin is and what color brown the, the DAB is. And because those are simply defaults, there's no reason to believe that they're necessarily going to be appropriate for your images or indeed for this image. I can digitally separate the stains as we saw before just by typing in the number two for hematoxylin and three for, for DAB. And that don't entirely relate to the colors we see there, but it does seem to give some kind of reasonable stain separation as well. And so we may be able to just run the analysis using these defaults and it may be okay. We don't want to overinterpret the accuracy of any of the, the values we get. If you get a mean, a, a mean hematoxylin value or, or, or DAB value, it doesn't necessarily mean very much in and of itself. And so it's not highly quantitative at all, um, but it still may be enough for us to categorize cells as being positive or negative. But what we can do if we want is we can improve these estimates. One way is we can simply double click on one of the values and then we can enter in a new stain vector. So if you know about color decomposition, you know about stain vectors, then you may have some characteristic values that you want to use and they can be entered here in the order of red, green and blue. And you can also change the stain name if you particularly need to, although if it's um, some of the commands within QPath are specifically for HDAB images, in which case you probably don't want to change them. But if you don't happen to know what a sensible stain vector would be, and indeed, why, why should you? What you can also do is you can draw a small rectangle in a suitable area. So I'm gonna say, I wanna teach QPath this is what the hematoxin looks like. Basically, it'll just use the an average value from within this small rectangle. I can double click on the hematoxin and ask, do I want to set the stain vector from the region of interest? So the ROI, I say yes. And you can see it's slightly modified then the stain vector. And now I get a slightly different stain separation. What I can then do is I can try and find a brown region. And this can get a little bit tricky whenever you're trying an area that ideally it would be only the dab staining and nothing else. And it may be that there is no such region available and actually you should be using an image that only has one particular stain on it as opposed to a mixture of stains. And so we may not find any particularly good region, but something that can help slightly is that under the brightness and contrast, we have a list of color transforms. One of them is normalized OD colors, which tries to give you a visualization of the image with the intensity of the stains removed. And so this is a more accurate, well, maybe not more accurate, but a more um, characteristic of, of the color of the stain as opposed to the intensity. And so you can see that these sort of grayish areas, actually, if you remove the fact that they're quite light, then you, you can see the actual color that is underlying them. And so with this kind of visualization turned on, then you can select an area that might be appropriate for the brown color. Double click on that, set the stain from the ROI, and then I may need to adjust the brightness and contrast here to each of the channels now that I've made that adjustment. But we can see that we have got a slightly different stain separation than what we had before. And again, we shouldn't overestimate the accuracy of this. You can still end up with some strange things like negative values or um, mixtures of stains that aren't entirely as you would expect. But still, you can see that in the positive cells, we clearly have higher values for the DAB as opposed to for the hematoxin. And so it's enough that we can at least work with it. Another way in which we can improve the stain estimate is we can give it a region to, from which QPath then tries to set suitable values from within that region. To do that, I want to select an area that contains a reasonable example of very blue pixels, very brown pixels, and also some background. 
and I want to make this as small as possible while still giving a good range of examples. So if I choose a very large region, then QPath's going to have to scale it down and that's going to end up smoothing pixels and smearing the stains into one another when it does a calculation. It's not going to be as good. So I want to use a fairly small region that QPath can handle all in one go, but I want to have blue, brown and background within it. Then I'm going to analyze pre-processing estimate stain vectors. And the first question I'm asked is, do I want to use the modal RGB values for the background? So if we have a background region, then probably you want to say yes here. Uh, what QPath is then going to do is it's going to take the most frequently occurring red, green and blue values. Remember, for every pixel, we have a red, green and blue value. It'll take the most frequent for each of those and use those as an estimate of the background. And that's actually important for the color deconvolution as well. A caveat that I need to mention is that this isn't, the background values aren't incorporated in QPath cell detection in version 0, 1, 2, which means that it might not perform so well if you have particularly a darker background. Um, but that's something that they probably will be incorporated in later versions of QPath. In any case, I'm going to choose yes here. And the next thing that comes up is this, these scatter plots. So for each pixel then from this region that QPath has extracted, it shows me then the plot of the red value versus the green, the red versus the blue, and the green versus the blue. And you can see that they fall in this kind of triangular cone-like shape and these lines are the stain vectors that we set before and we would want these lines to really go along the outside of this kind of cone and we can actually click on the end and we can try and adjust them until we do that it's a little bit hard to control whenever you're trying to work modify a line in 3d from these 2d scatter plots but it at least is possible what you can also do is you can press the auto button and then qpath will try and make a refinement if you're not happy with it, then you can adjust some of these parameters or you can adjust the line itself. This one, for example, ignore extrema, is you can see the QPath will give a bit of tolerance to allow some outlier pixels to be outside the region. And if I increase this, it'll ignore more pixels. And if I decrease it, then it'll go further along the outside. You also want to try and make sure that your region doesn't contain like pen marks or other kind of colors that shouldn't be influencing the estimate. So it's not really a fully automated estimate, it's one that you can use um, and you can control and the region of the image that you take is important. So now I further refine then the stain vectors using this, this method, I press OK, and then I want to give it a new name so that I know that these aren't the defaults. And I'll give it a check with the stain separation and you can see it's maybe starting to look like a better match for the actual colors present within that image. And so that's a refinement that's, that's possible within QPath. 